So this is who I am. I'm, um, I'm a partner at Lee Day Lawyers um, in London, and I specialise in dealing with asbestos diseases. My father sadly died 23 years ago whilst working in a shipyard. And um, the reason I'm going to uh, have a quick uh, chat with you guys today is basically to show you some of the extraordinary cases that I've had to deal with as a consequence of my campaigning work. Because like many of you, um, if you have a family member who dies, it, it changes you. Your entire life changes. I uh, watched my father suffer. So I've actually had, I'm going to just give you a quick uh, summary of three cases involving a spy, intimidation of experts, and destruction of documents. So I was spied on, and I issued, I, was, I had a tip off by, um, an NGO company, and they told me that there was somebody called Rob Moore, which most of us knew, <clears throat> because he used to attend conferences such as this. In fact, he turned up at uh, Linda's conference in 2014 and 15, and that's him. And we thought he was one of us, and that he was a campaigner, and he was an anti-asbestos campaigner. But lo and behold, in 2016, I discovered that he was a spy because I got a tip off and um, issued court proceedings against him because me and the other um, campaigners involved wanted to know why he was spying on us and who had told him to spy on us and what evidence he had obtained. And we, from issuing court proceedings, discovered that K2 Intelligence uh, is an intelligence agency, and they've got headquarters in New York. They're also in Washington, D.C., Los Angeles, Chicago, um, London, Abu Dhabi. They're now called, strangely, K2 Integrity, which is a bit of a, uh, a joke. They instructed him on behalf of... They said, uh, well, his manager was Matto Bagazzi, but they said, uh, when, we, when we got the court documents, we discovered somebody called Daniel Kunin and Nerlan Omarov on behalf of, they were directors of a company called West, Bay, West uh, Weatherby Select. And um, they wanted to know um, mainly what was going on in the Asian countries regarding uh, banning of asbestos and what the anti-asbestos campaigners were doing. So they instructed Rob to find out information, and sadly, um, as you can see from this um, paragraph, with three or four paragraphs, he managed to ingratiate himself with a, a, a campaigner called Laurie Cazan Allen, and she introduced him to um, two main anti-asbestos campaigners in Thailand. Um, and he was given access to all the main players, and sadly, as a consequence of that, uh, asbestos was not banned in Thailand. We, we, and many of us thought it was going to be banned in 2016, but it wasn't. And the papers which were, I obtained, sorry, we obtained from the court action actually showed that he sent very detailed reports um, and back to uh, K2 Intelligence and his managers, who then forwarded them on to their clients, explaining uh, what the strategies were of the anti-asbestos campaigners in those countries. And in fact, he put their lives in danger. And I'll show you why in a minute. In addition, he also managed to um, get involved with the WHO, the, you know, the World Health Organization. He also got invited to the Rotterdam Convention. Um, so sadly, he really did ingratiate himself with all the main players in the anti-asbestos campaigners, and, uh, campaigners. And what he managed to do uh, was that we believe he managed to stop the ban of asbestos in Thailand. And I'm very worried about that because um, although I'm from, I was born in England, my parents are originally from India, and I know that asbestos um, is being sent, to, is been imported into India from places such as Kazakhstan. So um, asbestos, the industry is live and kicking. We've heard a lot today about legacy of asbestos, but it's still being mined, it's still been exported around the world, mainly to the Asian countries now. And there are man companies which are still manufacturing asbestos goods. Sorry, can you hear me or is this echoey? I can hear it. So it's worth billions of pounds to those mine owners and those companies. So what they're doing now is instead of uh, sending it into England because it was banned there in 1999, 
They're exporting their dirty asbestos um, into these Asian countries. Uh, who are building, you know, asbestos cement fact um, buildings, uh, hotels, uh, apartments, and we're all going on holidays to Thailand, Singapore, and all those sorts of places in India, thinking, oh, how lovely is this? But really, it's all built with asbestos uh, products. So. So once he was exposed, um, he tried to claim in the court case that he was in fact a double agent. And he tried to say to the judge, look, um, I was trying to help the anti-asbestos campaigners. I was really on their side. I'm not, uh, I'm not a spy. You know, I wasn't really a spy. I'm, I was a nice spy. That's what he was trying to say. And what he did this about three years ago was he went to some journalists in the UK called um, Tortoise Media and he basically spoke to them. He spoke to somebody called Alexi Mustros and Kerry Thomas and he said, I want you to help me because in this court case, Humming Baines and Lee Day really picked on me. I really was not a spy. They got the wrong end of the stick. Can you please explain to the world who I was and why I was doing it? So Tortoise Media investigated it, and it took them three years because they not only interviewed um, Rob Moore, they interviewed um, you know so many other people. And at the end, of the, I think you should listen to this uh, podcast because it will give you an insight into. He, he, he was he basically saying I was I was a Buddhist and um, I was trying to be you know I, I was trying to um, be on I was on the right side and I was trying to help the anti asbestos campaigners but um, lo and behold if you it's it's about six episodes thirty minutes each you can listen to it for free I think on Spotify um, and it's an insight into the asbest anti asbestos um, industry and what they're prepared to do sending so he got paid about half a million pounds uh, no just over uh, half a million pounds for doing this job by the way um, the, the next thing I want to talk to you about is the intimidation of experts so there's a doctor Rod um, Robin Rudd in England and he is very uh, regarded around the world as an expert on asbestos diseases he's been working with patients who had, um, of asbestos disease, I think just under 50 years, and he produces court uh, reports uh, explaining to the judge, judges why asbestos is dangerous. So what happened to him um, in 2016, co coinciding with the spy case, was that someone called John Bridle, who is a fake professor, he's not even a professor, he's not, um, he calls himself a professor, he is, in fact, a doubt scientist, and he actually um, says that chrysotile is safer than water. That's what he says on his website, and he wrote to the General Medical Council, and he tried to get Dr. Rudd struck off. He basically tried to end his career, and he said that Dr. Rudd was preparing reports for lawyers, deliberately saying that asbestos was dangerous just for fees, so Dr. Rudd obviously contacted me and said, I'm extremely worried because if this, this is going to be investigated and it's going to take up my you know, life. So I started a court case and during um, the proceedings, we discovered documents and some of those documents, I mean, you can read what it, I've, you know, I've put out there. Yeah, actually, this is a conversation that John Bridle is obviously having with some other people who we don't, we, we never were given the identity the identities as to who he was communicating with. But for example, I mean, look at the first one. I really feel that at long last I have the silver bullet to bury them for good, and the Rudd conspiracy is the key. Second one, I don't expect to nail this crook as the establishment will circle the wagons round one of their own. So we just look at those sentences, isn't that, that's intimidation, that's really, you know, Dr. Rudd was sickened, he was very fearful that his career was going to end, but we won the case, and um, hopefully that's the end of John Bridle, but who knows, I'm sure he'll spring up somewhere else. The other thing that's happening is, I am aware that they, the asbestos industry, is also, intimidation, is also intimidating campaigners and experts in the US. For example, Linda Reinstein herself has actually been deposed on numerous occasions um, because she says that asbestos is dangerous and the talc industry wants to uh, cross-examine her and find out why she is saying this, what's going on. And 
this is using up a lot of her time and money, which she could be spending on anti-asbestos campaigns. And I also spoke to a lawyer who I know in the US, and, and I'm very aware that also the asbestos industry is picking on um, is picking on experts in, in the US. For example, this is what he said to me. He said, the in, this is regarding the um, talc industry. He, and this is the paragraph. He said, the cosmetic industry has a long history of trying to silence anyone who tells the public that their products can have asbestos and cause cancer. The industry did pressurize scientists and doctors in the 1970s, and they are still doing it today. Members of the cosmetic industry have recently sued multiple medical doctors, including Dr. Jacqueline Moline and Dr. Teresa Emery, because they published and testified what they know, mainly that asbestos in talc is dangerous and can cause mesothelioma. The asbestos industry is trying to intimidate and pressure all on pressure scientists and all health care providers, and this must stop. So this is happening, and it's not just happening in the US and the, and the UK. I'm sure it's happening in places like India. So we need to be aware of this. So I'm hoping if there are any Asian countries listening to this conference, I'm hoping that they, you know, they need to speak to people here. Don't just um, keep this to yourself. Don't stop saying, don't, you know, don't stop campaigning. Just stand up and we're with you. Thank you.